Number seven, <laughs> you can recover usable, natural, and desirable essential oil terpenes for use as flavor and aroma in formulation. So you're recovering them and reusing them in formulations. Looky here, you do an extraction. Now all your terpenes are in your extract. You're doing some more post-processing and all your terpenes are still in the extract, but they're yeah. not recoverable as a separate stream. Then you cook the living daylights out of them here and they're not great. And if you stop right here, okay, you think, oh, well, get a high terpene rich fraction. Well, yeah, you're not able to formulate oh. you're not, because getting a, a bunch of different things all together. So uh, if you wanna have different flavors and aromas that match the biomass material, you take it out ahead of time. Directly from the biomass. Directly from the biomass. Where you don't Rather have solvents, you, have you don't have all that anything. processing going on and it's just, it's reacting. We've talked about residuals. Yeah, we've stuff. talked about residuals. And so. that's now, if you do it later, it's in the terps, but at the beginning, it's right. beautiful. Number six would be CO2 extraction is five to 10 X faster with decarb biomass because the neutral molecule, which we talked about, the decarb neutral molecule yeah. is much more soluble in CO CO2. Right. That's because CO2 is a nonpolar CO2 solvent. It Acid be... doesn't like to get into the nonpolar CO2 solvent. We've been doing co-solvents since, since 2014. Wow. On, on our equipment, yep. okay? People like to use co-solvents. They use yep. a little bit of ethanol. Yep. In fact, the very first uh, piece of equipment that we made um, and had commissioned, we had it running solvent all the time. Yep. And so we put in like four or 5% uh, ethanol into the stream. And so, yeah, I noticed there's lots of people out there right now, you know, talking about the new thing, which is co-solvent. It's not. <laughs> In fact, there's been some really great papers also written by John McKay, Waters, and all of that crew. Well, they actually have, they did a whole bunch of really neat work on that. So, so if you want to get those papers, um, let me know and we can send them to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So the CO2 extraction is five to 10x faster. Um, you can you you can do a co-solvent to, to speed things up, but it's even, even faster if you decarb. So Number five, recovery of terpenes in their pure form enables preservation and formulation. Where do you put them? In the freezer. And then once you have them in the freezer, jar them up. They're in a jar. They're in a. They're sealed. They're not exposed to the light and air. You're not. You're certainly not cooking the living daylights out of them for five hours in a stirred reactor. There's nothing else in them, so they're they're pure. So if you are trying to formulate a tincture or, or doing any kind of blending operation, you want to have a pure terpene so you can actually do that. If you're yeah. adding cannabinoids, if you're adding fats and waxes, you're adding other flavonoids. It's not a reproducible event for manufacturing. Wow. Right? Right. So, because you, you have to have some guy there making a calculation, adjusting the formulation every time he makes it. Yeah. So that's, that's actually not a repeatable, not a repeatable process. Yeah. So when you get out the angel tears, okay, that's yeah. actually enabling consistency in your process. That's Formulating a really big with, deal. By it the is way. a big yeah. deal. Number four. Yeah. Well, yeah. four, you're not okay. cooking the hell out of the oils. Yeah, that's right. So that's the, the whole thing with degrading it. And look, if you, if you want to degrade your, all of your terpenes, yeah, just stick them out in the, yeah. you know, just, and it's not that it's all bad. In fact, I got, there's a bunch of reasons why it might be okay. In fact, yeah. if you come uh, to our facility and you do any kind of demo, we have, we have both ways of doing it. Yeah. And there's, there's certain times in which you would do it and certain times in which you wouldn't sell those. You terpenes. can sell them. And that market is huge. It is. It and, is. and the purer they are, the more you can command. So for those. they're not like, uh, they're full spectrum terpenes. Yes. In other words, there's, you know, um, there's, there's hundreds of different terpenes in, 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 the, in the vacuum distillate. Absolutely. And, uh, that's, what's so great about it. And you can sell those. Um, they're not like, uh, they're not like crystal clear. They actually look really great. Okay. They do. They, I mean, and they <laughs> smell great. Yeah. They have oh my gosh. And the market out there, go online and you you can sell those for between five and seven grand. Um, even I've seen them even higher for really good terpenes. Right. And, and, and they're not synthetic. I mean, those are real beautiful right. terps. So a lot of people who have, you know, like longevity and like the, um, the cannabis marijuana market, a lot of times they'll have, you know, terp terps that are specific to strains. Yes. And those, that's actually really great. And they can, you can sell those, you can actually get them and, and make a, you know, make a vape if you want to for that particular strain. That has that really, yeah, really aroma. Cool. And okay. You can convert to THC to CBN also which is really awesome. You can do that in the biomass. That's the best place to do it. A lot of people want to degrade the THC and the CBN later on in the oil. I don't recommend doing that for a lot of different reasons, but if you're interested in 
that conversion of THC to CBN. It really is the biomass. It really is that vacuum distillation yep. equipment that you yep. need to, to make that happen. So think that's about very that. cool chemistry, by the way. Yeah, we is. should do a thing on that. Sometime. We will. We should do that. That would be we fun. We'll do that. All right. And then it also dries out the biomass. That's um, you perfect. know, so you know, biomass typically has like five to ten percent water, or more, so, or, or even more. more. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it uh, starts off with almost seventy-five percent water, and then yep. you dry it typically to ten ten percent or something yep. like that. Okay, if you're doing ethanol extractions, that ten percent water is now in your ethanol. Yeah. Okay. That's and the, you don't that's, want that. That's, that's Remember that's all of the other things that we talked about. You don't want water in your ethanol. Right. You don't want water in your ethanol. So, but when what we do is, if you do, if you dry it out ahead of time. You, you put it through the vacuum distillation equipment, uh, you're decarbing the biomass ahead of time. You're not only getting the water out, but you're also getting the terpenes out. You're also making it faster to sorb and desorb and also extract. And you have all those all those benefits so, related to manufacturing reproducibility. See, I, th this is a great list. And, and mm -hmm. these are the seven reasons to decarb the biomass versus the oil. And the biggest thing is you can formulate, you have more control, and you've got a, a more efficiency. Yeah. All yeah. the way around. Absolutely. These are cool.